Hello, 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 influencers. Hello. Happy Winning Wednesday. Listen, I feel like it's been a long time. Even though we were just live on Saturday, I feel like it's been a while. And I don't know if I feel that way because I have just been super excited, um, anticipating tonight's live. I have been anticipating tonight's live broadcast because tonight, 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 we have none other than the Minister Bruce Mary, who is going to be our special guest speaker. And I'm telling you, when I say I'm super excited, I am super, super excited because many of you know him from a, being a praise and worship leader and that he does really, really well. And he has recently transitioned and he's now living in Georgia and his testimony is dynamic. So tonight, 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 Minister Bruce Mary will be speaking to the topic, breaking free from them for me. Many of you know, we are continuing our Peace and Priority series talking about uh, peace and priority as it relates to relationships. Many people don't really want to talk about relationships. That's like a sensitive topic. It is a very sensitive subject. However, we cannot grow from areas we don't have conversation. We cannot grow from areas that we don't speak to. So tonight, 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 join me. I am not going to belabor the time. Join me as we welcome Minister Bruce Mary on here with us tonight. Hello. Hey. Such a pleasure to have you on tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you for accepting the invitation to come on tonight to speak to this topic. So I'm going to step out of the way. If you are watching, listen, guys, share this live. I'll put your comments, your questions down in the comments, and we are definitely coming back to them. So I'm going to step out of the way, and I'm going to give way for you to introduce yourself and just to dive right in. Tonight's topic is breaking free from them for me. So, Bruce. All right. For, for many of you that do know, my name is <clears throat> my name is Bruce Murray. I'm originally from South Carolina, and tonight's subject is breaking free from them for me. When you talk about breaking free, breaking free is defined as having to escape from imprisonment. Mm. Uh, someone is being held against their will uh, for people or practices or you have to break free from a place of bondage. But in order to get to a place of freedom, you have to first realize that you are bound. Mm. And while most of us may not be physically bound, mentally we are bound. And if your mind is bound, your body has no choice but to follow what the mind knows. For me, breaking free means that because coming from coming, I originally come from South Carolina. Growing up, I was always around my family, and nothing was wrong with that. I was very happy, very complacent. But there came a time where I felt the need to go off and do what's best for my life. I've been operating in church and in ministry since the age of seven. I've been a part of ministry for over 17 years. And there come a point in the time where I felt like I was gifted. Yes, I was anointed. But I feel like my gift and my anointing was more than just for where I was and just for more than just my ministry, my church. So it came a time where do I put the wants and needs of others before what I, what I feel like I'm supposed to be doing? And for a long time, I, I, I battled with 
well, should I stay? Should I go? Um, is this the right move for me? Is it not? But one thing that solidified the decision for me is whenever I felt I was too comfortable and continued this cycle of the same thing over and over again. So I decided to move to Maryland with my sister at the time. And I went from being the most loved person to feeling like I was the most hated person. Not because I physically done something to someone, but because I chose to do something for me. Mm. My whole purpose for leaving was for me to experience life outside of my family, to experience ministry outside of just my church. So I was able to do that and able to be successful. Every day was not an easy day. I fought many of mental battles. I struggled daily with, well, Bruce, did you rate, did you make the right decision? Did what what were what they said about you was true? Like the many said I shouldn't have left, many said it wasn't God, many said that I wouldn't be successful, many said that I, I would have to come back because prior to me leaving, many, many have many of people in our family have left before. But every story was not a success story. But I was I was thankful for for that moment because I grew up in a church at a young age. So not all the time did I have a relationship with God. I had a relationship with church. Mm, that's good. I had a relationship with church. And I felt like as long as I was performing what I was supposed to do in church, that God was pleased. Mm. I wasn't out drinking, smoking. I wasn't out doing major sins. But I felt like as long as you know, I keep coming to church and doing what I'm told to do. That 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 that's okay. But God was requiring more. And to whom much is given, come on, much is required. And it took me leaving for God to continue to develop me not only spiritually, but to develop the gift that He placed in me. Because for a long time I felt like I could only do ministry at my church. No matter where I went out, no matter how effective I was when I did go out, which was very few and far between. I felt like I could only be effective. I could only do ministry at my church. And God has a way of letting me know that, no, Bruce, you are anointed, not just at your church. Your gift will make room for you and cause you to stand before great men. But you will never do that if you continue to stay stuck where you are. And a lot of people, well, feel like, well, I just can't, I can't do this and I can't do that. With God, all things are possible. You just have to go beyond your fear and walk by faith. And even, even with that, I was able to transition once again to Georgia, which was funny because the whole ride down from Maryland to Georgia, I was I had those same feelings again. I said, Lord, is this the right thing to do? Even with all the confirmation that was given, even with all the, the prophetic words that was given, I'm like, Lord, is this the right decision? Am I making? And the Lord told me, how many times do I have to tell you that I'm with you? How many times do I have to prove to you that I, I got your back? How many times do I have to prove to you that Everywhere your foot tried, you were able to possess it, and it will not possess you. So mm. I said, okay, God, forgive me, and I trust you. And I, I'm able to say I've, I've not been here that long, but I've seen God make ways instantly. Mm. The day that I moved, the day that I moved, I, was, I, I had an interview, but I scheduled my interview before because I knew I was leaving. But I scheduled my interview before, but I didn't hear back from the people. And I was like, okay, God, well, it what whatever happens, it happens. Uh, I'm not going to stress about it. Went to the interview. I, by the time they checked my resume, they asked me, well, will you be able to start this week? I said, I would love to, but I have to go back to Jersey and, and do praise and worship. Well, come back next week. You'll start next week. And I said, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. But had I let my fear stop me, I'd have been back home in Maryland living with regret. 
Mm. And and that's the thing that keeps me pushing pushing beyond all my fear. I don't want to live with regret. I don't want to live with shoulda, woulda, coulda. I don't want to live with well because time and chance happen to all men. What you do with that opportunity is on you. You can never blame God for not putting you in a place where uh, what you want to do and what he's called you to do, you're not able to fulfill it. So I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just grateful and thankful that I was able to push beyond the lies, push beyond the he said, she said, push beyond the feelings and the thoughts of the emotions of people that, that really did not know, only thought they knew. To to go after everything that God said I can have. Absolutely. So, Bruce, um, WOW is an acronym that stands for Wisdom Op Optimizes Winning, right? And the reality is, is that you have to utilize wisdom in order, <laughs> excuse me, in order to move. You got to utilize wisdom in your decision making, right? So, there was a level of wisdom that you had to possess in order for you to say, God, okay, as you lead me, I will follow. However, right. one thing that you said here that is really, that's key. A lot of people struggle with, um, with that mental uh, abuse when they suddenly move or they suddenly shift and they don't receive the affirmation or the acclimation right. that they look for from the ones they love the most. So could right. you share with, the, with us, like, how did you deal with that? I mean, the mental, a mental battle is not easy to deal with. It's not easy to overcome. So how did no. you deal with going through the mental process as you transition? There were days, Shay, <laughs> I mean, days. <laughs> I cried day and night, day and night, because I left my family, which is something I'd never done before. And to them, they not understanding why. Coming to a place where people don't understand why I'm having these emotional episodes. So there were there was times where I felt like I had nobody but God. And I'm like, God, you know. God, you know, and there were days it was, it, and another thing, it was just so much being said and so many lies being told that I couldn't say nothing. As much as times that I wanted to, to strike back or as much times as I wanted to correct the story, I think for some reason God just held my tongue. Mm. Held my tongue. And I'm like, and, I, and I'm so thankful that, that it happened like that because no physical person could get me out of that mindset. Mm. No physical person could get me out of that mindset. There were days where I felt like I was all alone, even with a group of people that said they loved me. Come on. I'm like, well, y'all just, just don't understand. And some, some, some of you may have been in this situation before, but y'all are not me. Y'all are not me. So y'all have not been here Mm -hmm. before so for me it, it was it was constantly that that mental helped develop the spirit helped develop the relationship it made me hone into God more it made me more sensitive to what he was speaking to me not only in his word but but divinely you know so prayer fasting and and, and listening and being sensitive to his voice because people are not going to understand no matter how many times you tell it to them, no matter how many times they emphasize or even see where you're coming from. Most people are not going to understand the, the mental abuse that, that, that comes with transitioning from one place to another, especially if you've never done it before and feel like you have no support at all. Exactly. So right there. Hi, Miss Palmer, Ty, Brittany, Listen, we, we got people on here tonight. They are just, I mean, really, I think that that's one of the hardest things. And I know even for myself, right, um, one of the toughest things for many of us to pull away from is family, right? Um, because those are the ones we love the most. And we feel like, you know, we need them to validate where right. we're going. If they don't and that validate was my it, thing. 
that was my thing. I felt like, you know, if if if, if anybody, because I've always done ministry with my family, like I needed, like I needed them to do it. Like I needed, I I needed their validation. I needed their protection. I needed them. But God has a way. Come on, of putting people in your life. They're not your blood, but they're definitely your family. They're your greatest supporters. They give you the most love. They, they're there for you when you need them. And they're pushing you to that next level. And they want to see you win. Not, they don't want to see you win based off of a hidden agenda. They want to see you win for the sake Genuinely. of winning. Genuinely. Absolutely. And you know, I think that that's something hard for you. many of us, Bruce, not just you, Many of us struggle in that area. Like if we don't get the affirmation from our family, we feel like what we're doing isn't of God, right? Exactly right. When you have a family that comes from the church. But one of the things yes. you said here that was really key is you were doing church, you wasn't doing God. Right. Right. And there is right. a difference. A lot of times we get caught up in the tradition of the church that we forget that this thing it goes deeper than the building. It goes deeper, it goes than, deeper church. than the platform of the church. But this is has to become a lifestyle, a daily practice. So I want you to kind of talk, speak to that. Like, what do you mean when you say, you know, you was caught up doing church and and not you you really didn't have that connection with God because the gifting and all of the, that like the anointing is its own thing right and the anointing does a lot I mean you again I say all the time your gift will get you in the room but your yes. anointing keeps you in the room so I definitely want to talk to what do you mean when you say doing church let me tell you what I mean when I say I was doing church Shay, I've been singing my whole life since the age of four. I started singing in church at the age of seven. I've been over praise and worship since I was 14 years old. I've been over choir since I've been 15 years old. I've been putting on program and running services since I was 17 years old. And I've been ministering since I was 22 years old. I've been doing that since a child. And Yes, I had a form of a relationship with God, but I never knew the fullness of, of, of God because for me, honestly, as a child growing up in ministry, I put my pastor in the place of God. Mm. I put my leader in the place Come of on. God. Now, it, 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 it just naturally happened because at the time when I'm performing, I don't I don't know anything about anointing or Holy Ghost. I'm just singing off my natural strength. You know, my whole family, we come from a musical background. So for us to get up and sing and, and move, have an emotional episode from the audience is, is, is second nature to us. But when you talk about the anointed and the spirit, all of that to me ties back to the word and, 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 and being closer to God. And that develops your anointing. I say this all the time. We know how to do church. What you say? We know how to say, preach, pray, praise, prophesy, lay hands, all of that. But your life living outside of church and how you minister to people, not of the church, is what matters. Absolutely. Do they see a difference in you whenever they see you? Or are you just like them? Just go to church. That's good. So whenever you talk about doing church and having the anointing and doing ministry, doing church comes easy. It takes the anointing. It takes a relationship with God. It takes it takes all of that to minister to people, all people, broken people, wounded people, uh, people that feel abandoned, people that feel like there's no hope. People, people all over the world, all over the world. It takes that and more because you never know what you're gonna run into. And if you, if you, if you run into people based off of what you do in church, you're not gonna be affected and you're not gonna reach people. Absolutely, you're absolutely right, guys. Please put your comments in, your questions in. She, Tanika says autopilot Christians getting used to church, bro. You minister though. Let God make you in this lonely place. Sometimes you're absolutely right. I say all the time, 
God sometimes has to make us uncomfortable. The, the uncomfortable. problem is in complacent. When we get comfortable, we get complacent, right? And in our and that was my issue. Yeah, in our complacentness, that's when our sinful nature starts to do what it wants to do because now we know routine, we know programming, we right. know what notes to hit, we know what to say to get the people moving. But the reality right. is, is like you say, this thing goes beyond the musical or the emotional movement. This thing goes to the lifestyle. And, you know, God gave me this vision to create the Wow Inspire platform to, 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 to get to those people that has a testimony, that has an inspirational message through their own going through, through their own God-given, you know, testimonies, their own test that they seen God hand move in their life. You know, a lot of times, uh, some people will never get into the doors of a church, right? However, right. when people start seeing you walk in the, the, the teaching and when they see you living the life, and I'm not talking about living it because today is Sunday. I'm talking about right. living it on a Friday night when the people that you used to hang with and party with is getting ready to go to the club, right? So I'm talking right, about right. that lifestyle. When they start seeing that, you know, this thing ain't, this thing for play. You know what I'm saying? Like, we've all been in that place where, you know, we don't went to church and I've, I've t testified to it before where I was comfortable with at one point going out on a Saturday night, but because I was taught religion and that you, it's, it's tradition to go to church Sunday, I still got up and made it to church on Sunday morning. However, right. that thing wasn't prevalent in my life because I was doing it out of the tradition. It wasn't right. until I got to a place where I said, you know what? I, I, I need to be accountable to God. I'm accountable, accountable to, to God. Else. Why am I not accountable to God? I'm accountable to my kids. I'm accountable to my husband. I'm accountable to the pastor of the church. But yet, right. I am not accountable to God. Something is wrong somewhere. My blessings ain't right. coming from uh, uh, my kids. My blessings ain't coming from my husband. The blessings ain't coming from my pastor. When we get to a place where we are accountable to God, everything we do shifts and, and changes. Everything, everything, everything we do shifts and changes, and it shifts for the better. It shifts for the better. Your life will begin to increase because, because you're doing it from a genuine place and not from a place where you feel bound or, or, or constricted by the rules and the religion. You're doing it from a place of love. Mm, absolutely. You're right. So um, I'm going to go back and read comments. Um, but right there, when you say genuine place, like sometimes I think like for for this Peace and Priorities relationship series this month, I think that's. I think God has a way of breaking the norm, right? Like, it's okay Definitely. to talk about your family differences without throwing them under the bus. It's, it's a healthy conversation, right? To help someone right. understand that they're not the only ones dealing with, you know, issues of breaking free from what the family tradition is to right. actually exploring what God is saying is next. And today God was dealing with me with shift. Like, what does it mean to shift? In order to shift, you got to change. You got to move. You got you got to move. And it's, and he gave me shift. It's spelled S-H-I-F-T, right? Shift right. starts or happens when you deal with the I, identity, when you deal with the F, the fears, and when you deal with um, the other one, it's the threats. The threats that come with you having to move, the threats that coming that comes with you having to to change something, right? The change right. creates something that makes us question our identity. It then causes us to deal with some fears, right? Because we're not sure of where we're going because the next place is not a comfortable place. It's not a no, familiar place. Not at it all. It is a strange place. So going to a strange place. You deal with some fears and then you deal with some threats like people saying, oh, you don't want to do that because you're not used to being on your own. Bruce, you've always been around your family. Bruce, you've right. always been with your best friend since elementary school. 
But Bruce, how long do you allow those things to keep you stagnant and stuck in a place where God is saying that the ministry I've placed down on the inside of you has, it goes much further beyond South Carolina. Bruce, I need you to get out because there is a people in a nation that needs to hear from Bruce. And it's not going to happen in your comfortable place. While I'm no. comfortable getting out of my comfortable place. Okay, God, do you have to allow me to, do you have to involuntarily move me? Mm. Mm. God, I don't want you to have to involuntarily move me. So I want you to kind of, let's read some of these comments. Um, let me go back up. Listen, I appreciate you all for tuning in with us tonight. For those that have shared the live out, for those that are interested in speaking, telling your testimony, like I said, this platform, you know, is literally, I got a story, I got a testimony. God has done something for me. I'm not perfect, but I am trying to live this life according to the ways of God. So if you have a story, you've been inspired, you got some wisdom after you done went through that test, we want to hear from you. Um, Miss Adams, thank you for tuning in with us. Um, KK, thank you for tuning in. Um, Brittany, thank you. Miss Palmer, true, but it's God's will, absolutely. And, you know, we spoke in previous lives, you know, if you be willing and obedient, that wasn't yeah. an option. It was willing and obedient. It's not, oh, you can be willing or obedient. You have to be both. Then he said you'll have be, to be a both. Than lamb. Um, she said, that's good. She said, autopilot Christians getting used to church. Bro, you minister though. Let God, let God make you in the lonely place. Absolutely. Most powerful. When he puts you in uncomfortable places, nobody agrees or be, be there for you. In that place, you find your relationship and your strength. Oh, come on here. Would Definitely. you agree? Definitely. <laughs> she said you talk Definitely. Right. The pastor is not our God. He is flesh, and he has to repent as well as we do. But we have to know God as head of our lives. God is, um, that's good. That's God is the head of our lives. Absolutely. Yes, I was just doing church out of tradition because I was growing up. We had to go to church sometimes every day, but I wasn't getting nothing. I was just going. But we have to get in a place where we go and we go. I'm sorry. Where we where we go, get into a place in God that we are going to church to learn of God and what he expects of us as his children. Okay, she has a question. Why do you think a lot of worship leaders beg and bash the congregation doing worship? I'm asking because I see this so much in church, but I noticed that when you minister, people were up and on their feet via the anointing. What would you say to them? For me, I think it's one, they're doing what they've seen prior. Um, and two, it, it, it has a lot to do with relationship. Like I said, most people that are nat naturally gifted or that can naturally sing, um, they go based off of that. Um, instead of relying and, and solely relying on the anointing and, and, and the move of God and, and being sensitive to what's needed to the house. I say all the time, I'm not the best singer in the world, but what I am is sensitive to God and to his and to the house and, and try to speak what needs what someone needs to uplift and encourage somebody through praise and worship. Um beating and bashing and, 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 and coercing people into a place of praise and worship um not really gonna help help them. Most people, I know they do it to get over nerves, initial nerves in the beginning. But um, no, when, when it comes to praise and worship, you, you have to pull off of God's strength in order to minister to people. A lot of singers, I know, they, they, they glean from different stuff. Like some would glean from music to, to get them to a place. When at that time, whenever you're up ministering before people, you should already be in a place because it's time for you to pour out. It's time for somebody to receive of what God has given you. 
So I agree. I think um, a lot of it is like you said, starting off relationship, right? If you are in relationship with God, even before you get to that service, God is depositing. He's downloading into you. Listen, he's cultivating your spirit to be able to deliver to those people. And I think another thing, when you, you speak about praise and worship, some people can't perform or they can't give it their all unless they are getting something in return from the audience. What I mean is the audience participation. But everyone right. doesn't praise and worship the same, right? Just they because don't. I'm not jumping they over don't. the queue does not mean that I am not in worship mode. My worship may look like meditation. It may look like, right. you know, me just sitting silently because I am receiving the download from God. So I think, you know, Miss Green, I think that has a lot to do with that worship leader. And ultimately, like you said, Bruce, you know, when you, when it come, becomes second nature to you, you can do it without thinking twice about it. But it's the anointing that makes the difference. It's the anointing. It is the anointing that makes the difference. That and, makes and people get is, up. Whenever, whenever you are, are, whenever you minister before people on a weekly basis, I was always taught you never wait to the day of a service to get prepared for that service. Absolutely. Like you you never consecrate you never consecrate yourself for an assignment. You live a consecrated life. That's it. Because you never know when you're gonna be called on or what atmosphere you're gonna be used in. Exactly. You never know. Yeah. I agree and I gotta tell you um Bible study tonight was off the chain. Bruce, we missed you. I, I'm not even I miss y'all too. So it was off the chain. And, you know, Pastor's teaching now about kingdom influences, right? And as he was talking, I come on and I address the influencers. So what are we what are we influencing? How are we influencing? Right? So it just made me think about a lot of different things. And he spoke, he was speaking on the 10 different spheres of influencing in the kingdom and how mm. we have to literally be able to submit all of us right so right that's good mr ronald said worship starts at home worship has to be in you a part of you and the first true act of worship is honesty god here i am flaws and all amen that is yeah. the truth god yeah. can't god can't move a situation like okay so this is the thing we fear what we don't face right the reality right. is, it's a fear because we will not deal with it. We will not face it. God will. God knows our flaws and all, as Mr. Corbin has said, but he's waiting for us to submit our will to his. God knows that. Exactly. That's why he give us free will, but he's not going to fight against your will. No. So, Bruce, and yeah, you got you to yield and submit to him. He's Absolutely. not going to force you. He's not going to force you. Has the power to, but he gives you the power to choose. Absolutely, he's not going. He's not going to fight your will. So, in mm -hmm. our last few minutes, um, Bruce, um, what would you? What would be your last encouraging words or your words of inspiration to? Um, hold on, we got another comment here. Um, what would be your 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 last um, your encouraging words to someone that's dealing with? Um, they're, they're they they're struggling with. Um, releasing themselves from relationships that God has said, listen, I'm, it's time for you to shift. It's time for you to move. What would you say to someone that's dealing with that? I'm going to say this. One, you have to know that it's God and not your flesh. You have to know that it's God and not your flesh. Two, be prepared to deal with the aftermath. Be prepared to deal with the negative comments and even be prepared for the mental battle in your mind. Yeah. Be, be ready to put up a fight because not only people will fight you, the enemy will fight you and, and will have you questioning your decision. That's why I said make sure that it is not your flesh because if it's, a, if, if it's of God, 
it'll stand and it'll flourish. But if it's of your flesh, it'll come to nothing. Make sure that you are not leaving from an impure place or, or from a filthy place. Make sure that 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 you leaving has has nothing to do with oh, oh you're mad, so you, you're gonna run. Because where you're running to, you're still gonna be faced with those issues. That's good. And make sure that you 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 with with all the backlash that's going to come, because it's gonna come. Make sure that you're innocent mm. by any means necessary. Make sure that you're innocent. Yes. Scripture said if I hold and, my and have faith and believe in God and, and trust what he's telling you. Because if, if God spoke a word to you, no matter what, no matter how long ago it, it was, it's going to come to pass. When, Follow God. When you step out and do it, right? So, amen. The Lord said, if, if you hold your peace, I'll fight the battle. So fight don't battle. just fight it or deal with it your way, but deal with it spiritual in the spiritual sense. In the spirit. Work the word. Like, get into the word and work the word. God is, listen, don't charge God foolishly. If he tells you to shift, he tells you to move, shift and move. But work his word. Right? So, um, Elder Danielle Man says, yes, how I worship is none of folks' business. When they are ministering through praise and worship, because if their worship is real, the atmosphere will automatically shift. And when you are truly lost in your own worship, you don't got That's time right. to pump and prime and conduct someone else's. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. That's so, right. Listen, we are at the end of this segment. I appreciate you all for tuning in. Listen, Saturday morning, we are back here. Saturday morning live. And the raw, real, raw, and uncut elder and author, Danielle, Ma Danielle Mann, will be our speaker on Saturday. Listen, when I tell you awesome. to tune in, tune in. Um, minister, uh, Ronald, I'm, I'm, I'm calling him a minister. Minister Ronald Corbin says... Can y'all imagine if Abraham required confirmation to go when God told him to go? Listen! Right, right. <laughs> Worship cleans and clears the heart. It is imperative in this time to forget about all the extra stuff and we should pray for one and we should pray for one thing and that is to know the voice of God clearly. Can he sing something too? We're going to get to that. I've never <laughs> met one person by yet who has felt when they knew the voice of God. That is the truth. We hear That's a, right. a voice. That's right. We hear Alexa, hello. But we don't <laughs> want to say, okay, God, what are you saying to me today? Oh, y'all don't want to talk tonight. So listen, right. listen, guys, they want you to sing something. Real quick, but this is the thing, right? With Wow Inspire, we want people. Now, y'all done heard him speak, so you know there's a preacher down on the inside of Minister Bruce. Amen? I mean, he gets lost in his worship, and I just love how he freely allows God to just use him and have his way when he is praise and worship um, leading. Um, so they want you to sing something, just a little something for him. Okay. <clears throat> you will always be like this the Lord will perfect that concerning you sooner or later it'll work in my favor Turning around for me. Yes, amen. Listen, I'm not fooling with uh, Mr. Corbin. Like, he keeps going there talking about Abraham move because he knew the voice of God. Don't get us started. We're going to actually close this out. But Mr. Corbin, because <laughs> I think you got something you want to say, right? So, Bruce, again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And listen, sooner or later, it's turning around. For each of you, each of you that yeah. are listening now, each of you that will hear this playback, 
understand when you hear the voice of God, you shift according to his voice. It will. It's got to turn around for you. Listen, Mr. Gordon, you contact me. I'm telling you. So it's got to turn around for you when you are intentional about moving when God says move. I'm not allowing people to become your priority, but allow yeah. the of God and the move of God to become your priority. So real quick, just a rundown. Thank you again, Bruce, for coming on here tonight with us. Thank you for having me. will be available as well as it will be on YouTube. Amen. Um, so Saturday, we have the amazing elect um, author and elder, Danielle Mann, who will be speaking to the topic the, that loss was the game. You thought you lost something, Ooh. but baby, that was the game. Um, and then on Wednesday, the 21st, we're bringing back Mr. Troy Carroll, who many of you know him from Troy Isms. He will be speaking to the topic when the dysfunction stabilizes you. <laughs> mm. I can't wait for that. Do you understand that dysfunction has a way of stabilizing you in both a positive and a negative way? But again, it's Definitely. your free will and your choice as to how it will stabilize you. On Saturday, August the 24th, we have the wife coach herself, Miss Kimberly Cleveland, who will be speaking to the topic, understanding the ministry and preparation, the ministry of preparation and maintenance. And then we have on Wednesday, the 28th, we have the amazing Shelly Johnson, who will be speaking to the topic, wounded but not broken. And closing us out for this month, we have the elect amazing Quana Renee, Lady Quana Renee, who will be speaking to the topic, success after failure. Mr. Corbin says, quickly, young man, I hear God said another level. He's not finished enlarging your territory. Amen. He's giving you that. Amen. I received that. He is not finished enlarging your territory. Listen, guys, we appreciate you all. And as you know, we show up here every Wednesday night at 10 p.m. And every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. to simply inspire the influencer in you. You are amazing. God has called you to do great things. And it is not until you wake up the warrior in you and you start moving, you start allowing God to shift you and you start hearing his voice to move and shift as he say so, because there is a people waiting on you. I love you all to life, Bruce. Thank you, thank you, thank you again. Thank you, fam. So I love you all to life. You are having amazing. Y'all like when I do that. Y'all <laughs> have an amazing rest of your week, and we will see you back here on Saturday morning. As you know, we have our inspirational messages that we post every day in the WOW Inspired community. So y'all just stay tuned. God is literally shifting us and he's doing some great things. And I'm super excited for all of those that have accepted the invitation to come and speak on this platform to share their inspiration with you. They have been inspired to inspire you to inspire someone else. We're just paying it for yeah. you. Have an amazing night, guys. I love you to life again, Bruce. Thank you. Thank you, Shay.